Okay, welcome to the wireframing module. Um, so now what we're going to do is basically apply everything that we've, we've taken from our planning stage um, and we're going to apply it to uh, an actual set of wireframes. Now, if you're not familiar with what wireframes are, I can give you a quick glance and we'll actually go through this in a little bit more detail. Um, but this is basically a wireframe. It's literally just the wires and layouts of where you want things placed on a page. Um, so uh, we'll definitely take a peek at that um, application uh, a little closer. Um, that, that tool is, is called Mockflow. Um, this is also the place, what this is going to become the, the final artifact of a wireframe is basically your specifications document that you're going to hand over to a UI designer or a developer uh, or both. Um, that they can use to begin to program and actually develop this this product uh, or design it. Um, so the reason I have uh, developer notes here is, is that's where I include um, all the notes about the uh, specific piece of functionality that I would like um, for one element of a page. And I'll, I'll definitely illustrate that and show you what that looks like. Um, there's really two ways, uh, I'm sure there's more, but there's two main ways that you can, you know, kind of hand over you know, a specifications document um, to, you know, the development team. Number one is doing an actual specifications doc where you literally just write out everything that you want. Um, to me, that's, uh, is open to interpretation. Um, I'm a visual person. I would rather just take the time to draw it out, um, present that to them, and then just add notes as I go along. Um, that's going to be very important um, as you move forward. It uh, alleviates any questions or any interpretation that the you know programmer may have or the designer may have, um, you know, and make and prevent really anything from getting misconstrued um, because you're just going to have to loop back and then redo that work. So you're going to save time and save money the more time that we spend um, and the, the more accurate we make these wireframes. Um, so again, you know, we've, we've been through, you know, the ideation phase, the planning stage, the wireframe stage, and it really hasn't cost you a penny yet. Um, it's all your time. And the more time that you invest in making sure that this is exactly what you want um, and then and, and having these, these uh, you know, these artifacts to hand over to somebody to then start to create um, is going to save you a lot of time and a lot of money. Um, so let's take a peek at that tool. It's probably the best way to go about it. Um, so this here is a project that, um, it's an old set of wireframes for an old project that I, that I had done. Um, but as you'll see, it, it literally is just mocking up, you know, here's the navigation um, the, you know, for, for, for each of the feature sets. Um, you know, I have a little dashboard here in this case, and, 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 I'm, and I'm clarifying you know, what I want them to see. So um, this particular application was for building uh, countdown timers and uh, call to action uh, pop-ups. So you'll see, you know, you want to, you know, you could name the particular timer that you've created. Here's the type it is, because there were different types of things, so I wanted it easy for them to see. Um, it, it was for WordPress, so it spit out a little short code. Um, you know, the last date it was modified, and then, of course, some actions that you could take, whether editing or deleting it. And then, of course, creating new ones. So I just replicated the, um, um, you know, the navigation here across the top because it's WordPress, so it was specific to, uh, if you've ever used WordPress, you know that most of the menu items you can get here to on, the, on the side, and then usually it will, they will be copied over here just for uh, easy usability. Um, but if you'll notice here, there's a couple of notes. Um, so, and I even make the note, this menu, uh, you know, this menu is the standard WordPress menu area. Uh, I'm not including this on the rest of the wireframes. Wire um, so that they know when I go to the next screen here and they don't see, you know, the actual uh, WordPress menu, it is assumed that obviously I want it to be there and you don't have a choice because that's what WordPress does. Um, but anyways, um, these notes, you know, make this sortable. So in other words, when you, you know, when you click this, this column, I want it to be able to sort so that they could, uh, all the opt-in pops, which we were calling them there and social CTAs, you know, you could, you could order them that way, uh, just for an easy way in case you have a, you know, a ton of these things, it's just an easier way to organize. So this is the type of, you know, functionality that you really want to think about, um, when you're creating your wireframes. So I'm going to hop over actually to, I think is that, yeah, that's probably a good one. And you'll see all kinds of notes here. So this particular, I mean, that's a, you know, that's a pretty hefty, um, hefty wireframe, but it leaves nothing open to interpretation. And when I, when the final product was done, this is what it looked like, uh, at least as far as layout. Um, <laughs> it also had some, had some graphics and, and was designed uh, properly. 
Um, but if you'll notice, you know, make these notes very clear on what I, you know, this particular icon, this is what I wanted to do. Here's what should happen, you know, if they hit uh, save. Um, you know, allow, uh, upload, or pick from media library. You know, so I'm, I'm getting very specific on certain items. Now, you don't have to do it for every little piece. Uh, a developer, a programmer, for the most part, you know, you're going to have a conversation with them anyway, so you'll probably give them the overview of what this application does. This is just to get, you know, the specifics. Um, so, you know, if there's any specific piece of, of, of functionality that you want to have happen, um, you know, make sure that you, you note those things on here, and then this becomes your working document. So as you kind of go along, um, you know, in the process, as the development is happening, um, you know, the programmer may say, hey, you know, I see you want this here, but, you know, what if we did this? Okay, great. At least it's opening up that conversation. You have to be able to communicate back and forth with, uh, you know, with whoever's working on this because things will change. And sometimes there's a better way to do things uh, than what you maybe originally had thought. Um, but then all you need to do is, is edit this set of wireframes because it's usually just a small tweak. Um, you know, the most time consumed is obviously the first pass through it. Um, and it's a very interesting, um, you know, uh, process because you're, it really forces you to think, uh, you know, how do you want this to work? And, you, and you, sometimes you'll run into a quarter and go, oh, geez, you know, I, I really wanted it to do that, but I just don't think it can. So we have to think of a new way to do it. Now, just think if you didn't have something like this and you just simply had a conversation, you know, I mean, an hour long conversation with, uh, you know, a developer or a designer. So much can be left into it up to, uh, you know, interpretation. You could you could end up spinning around, spending tons of money, having to rework you know this, rework that because something wasn't clear enough, or you know I didn't remember that we had that conversation. Here it's all documented, and you just version it out. So as you make little edits, it's version two, next one version three, and then the developer, the designer, whoever is on your team, uh, you know just always sticks to the most recent version. Uh, so you know, let's let's take a peek at this particular tool. Now, there's a ton of tools out there like this, um, and I just did a simple search here for wireframing tools. Uh, Balsamic, I've used. I've used probably 20 different uh, uh, wireframing tools. For the most part, they're all very similar. Um, I just look for one that's cheap <laughs> because uh, you know I want to save the money. Um, but there's a m many many different. Gliffy is, is a good one as well. Uh, but there's many of them out there. I just prefer Mockflow. It's inexpensive and it's just super easy to use. Um, and I'll even give you a little demo here to show you how, how this thing works, because um, this, this is, is an extremely important, you know, part of this process. You want to make sure that this is, um, that this is done well. Um, so, you know, for instance, um, here they have, a, most of these have this as well. It's just a duplicate the page, because most of the time, you know, your navigation is always really going to stay the same. So you don't have to keep, every time you add a new page, you don't have to add in the menu again, you create it again. Um, so here you can see I just did a copy and I can just really just delete whatever I don't need on that particular page. Um, there's a list of components uh, that this particular program comes with. Um, so, you know, if I just wanted a little, you know, a representation of an image. Okay, so there's the image. Uh, let's say I want a, um, you know, a headline here. I can say, you know, my profile. My profile. Um, and then, you know, of course you can adjust fonts and, and whatnot, um, you know, to, to kind of show, you know, hey, this is a profile, uh, you know, there's text areas here that you can, you can play around with, and actually I'll just leave that, but, uh, you know, let's just say that that's my profile, um, there's a, you know, a button icon, you know, maybe this is to update, okay, and there it is, okay, so you're, you're basically just drawing this out, that's how simple this thing is to use, uh, and actually when you create a project, you'll see there's, um, uh, when you create a new wireframe, there's templates that you can use, you can save your own template, start from scratch, there's iPhone, uh, Android, iPad, Windows Phone. There's different themes for Drupal, for WordPress, for Joomla that you can start with. Um, Bootstrap, which you know, actually create a new one. I'll just call it test. <clears throat> and for this particular one, it basically gives you all these, uh, you know, rather than just the plain old, um, you know, icons and whatnot that, that come stock with this, they, they've already like, kind of created some more fancy ones for you. Um, as you can see, you know, there's a whole bunch of different uh, elements here, and for the most part, it covers everything that, that you need. So you can certainly start with this as well if you just want it to look, uh, look a little bit better. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's different ways to do that. Um, so let's go ahead and leave that. And uh, getting back to this. Um, Okay, so uh, again, you know, just, just reiterating the fact that uh, it's very, very important to have these notes. 
always jot down any question that you, you may have. I, I pose questions. Look at here, unless you have a suggestion on a better way, I'll pose questions right to, you know, to the um, to the team, you know, and see if they have a better way of things, you know, things to work. Um, and that collaboration is, is extremely important. Um, so again, wireframing, uh, it's something that, that needs to happen. It is time consuming, uh, but in the end, it's costing you nothing, nothing but time. So you've really spent almost no money right now to create a product. And the more time you put into this and the more detailed you get and the more thought you put into it, the less it is going to cost you in the uh, in the future. Trust me, I've been bitten by it before. And I make sure I spend an ex uh, you know, as much time as I possibly need in this phase uh, to make sure everything is clear uh, for the team as well as myself. Um, it's definitely a great exercise to go through and really forces you to think about how, you know, how this product is going to, is going to work. So uh, that takes care of the wireframing uh, section. And next we'll go ahead and we'll talk about, uh, we'll talk about outsourcing and how we, how we find, uh, you know, good people uh, to build our product. Hey, it's Keith here. Uh, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about um, how kind of how I got my start in product creation uh, and internet marketing. Now, if you've watched the entire seven-part uh, series uh, for the product creation blueprint, and you want to get a little bit more deeper uh, into the subject, which there's uh, still a lot, a lot to know and a lot to learn. Uh, this is a course that I had taken back in 2015, uh, put out by Mark Thompson of uh, Digital Kickstart, uh, which is pretty much where I got my start from. Now, this uh, this is called Seller Kickstart, and it is um, you know, basically a boot camp, six-week product creation boot camp, which goes very, very deep into a lot of the subjects that um, I spoke about um, in my seven-part series. Um, however, this goes, like I said, much, much deeper, and there's some great, um, great tips and um, you know some great processes to get you guys get you guys started. Now, I use, like I said, I used this this course back in 2015, and it's been um, revamped um, uh, back in February of 2016 with all new content. All the old content is still available um, and still very pertinent uh, because this is a process that I use um, and that I was taught. <clears throat> That you can use over and over and over again. Um, you know, just certain things change uh, over the years, as all technology does. So uh, Mark went ahead and updated all this to get some fresh content in there uh, for 2016. So I just wanted to give you a quick kind of walkthrough here and, and show you, um, you know, what's what's in this course. Um, and I can't, just can't say enough about it. Like I said, it's what I used to get started, um, and it helped me generate in my first year, which would be last year, uh, over a million dollars in gross sales uh, for from product creation. So uh, again, it's called Seller Kick. Start and what it'll do is uh, so the, the the first week here is is, is Mark goes a lot into the foundation, um, you know the most efficient um, and you know and strategic ways of creating pro uh, products and programs you know for your for your target audience. Um, <clears throat> now you know again you don't really need to know much about product creation uh, the process getting into this this is this is for beginners uh, it's going to take you from you know the ideation stage you know all the way through launching a product um, and there's so many little caveats uh, within that process um, that a, a deeper look is really the way to go um, so that first week is going to take you really into the foundation of, of product creation um, the next module uh, you're going to go into more market research um, you know knowing you know the profiles of your audience uh, looking for that right product you know how to create that product um, and really just make sure that you make you know the the smart choice in picking which product that you're, you're going to develop um, to make sure that the audience is receptive and that there's you know there's room in the market for it now week three the, uh, it basically goes into a much deeper look into product creation uh, it's basically going to give you the it's pretty much the blueprint that I've spoke about in, in the in this uh, the seven part series um, the product creation blueprint uh, but we're going to go much 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 deeper into it um, you know uh, so you're gonna get a lot of fill in the blank worksheets um, that'll keep you you know ahead of everybody else uh, get you to get it done a lot faster um, as well as a lot of you know he talks about a lot of you know the things that he's learned um, you know throughout the years now if you guys don't know who mark is he's done over 20 million in sales in the past four four or five years um, so he definitely knows you've probably seen his products out there um, so he definitely knows you know this process and, and how to how to how to use it um, so the next one there is they're going to go into the marketing funnels and optimization. Uh, Mark's become pretty much uh, one of the leading experts in funnel creation. Um, you know, for years he was he was building products and really not putting any kind of funnel in place, and realized he's just leaving money on the table. Uh, so he really started to get into the study of funnels, a lot of testing, a lot of A/B testing, which he's going to go into in this course as well, and kind of show you what worked and what didn't, um, and how he really increased his sales you know exponentially by adding the correct funnels behind you know behind his products. Um, 
after that, you're gonna go into uh, product marketing uh, and the promotion, uh, kind of how to get this product out into the market, especially if you're new, uh, how to connect with people um, that can help you out. There's a big network of folks out there that um, you know will help on, on your product launches. Uh, so he'll go into that. Um, now, and also, you know, once you kind of get the, you know, you get into it, you get your first product out there, it's going to show you how to scale. Uh, because as you have, you know, more and more product, it's exponentially more, you know, more to take care of. Uh, so he's going to show you, you know, how to use virtual assistants to take care of the majority of that, handle your support desks. Uh, I mean, there's so many things that, that um, you know, that he goes into in this course. I really can't can't get into all of them here. Um, but, you know, come over here and, and take, a, take a look at, um, at what he has to offer. Uh, there should be a link on the video here that will take you over to to this this page and you can you can do a little bit more research now along with this course you're also going to get um, you're also going to get a ton of bonuses basically shows you how his office is set up what kind of software he's using what kind of hardware he's using uh, his equipment list the preferred service provider Rolodex um, so I mean it's, it's taken years to kind of get this you know get this for these preferred, uh, preferred service uh, providers um, get this big list together. So he's going to share that with you. He's going to give you exact landing page templates, split test results, um, support, which is a big one, um, on how to handle the support of uh, you know of your products um, and how you can do that. You know, basically with some virtual assistance for a very very low cost, um, as well as a physical supplier. Uh, I'm sorry, physical product supplier list if that's what you're you know what you're you're into and fill in the blank email sequences. Um, so it's uh, it, it's it's quite a course that is packed with just hours and hours of of, uh, of content and he takes you step by step each each of the steps in, in this process uh, to make sure that you're successful so if it's something that uh, you're really interested in getting learning more about product creation I couldn't I couldn't um, couldn't stress more you know this is this is the this is the program you're gonna want to get into um, so go ahead and uh, take a look at this and um, we'll see you on the inside